Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial. In this one we are going to discuss about React, Wheat, Vtest and Cypress. You might be wondering why I am wearing these glasses and it's not just because they're cool but I'm getting one of those eye infections that I get sometimes through the year and that is because my eyes have been a bit more sensitive. With that said, let's actually get into it. So we're going to start with Vite. We're going to also look into Vtest which is the official testing library developed by the Vite team. And then we have Cypress that we use for end-to-end -end testing. So we're going to start from absolutely scratch. And by the end of this video, you will have a complete setup of a React application that has unit tests and end-to-end -end tests set up already. So you can scale your application as you go forward. So first of all, we are going to start with a new project. So I'm going to go to my terminal and here I'm going to say npm create and beat. And then it's going to ask me about the app name. So let's go with react beat boilerplate for this one and then we are going to select the TypeScript or React framework and then the TypeScript version for this. Now I'm going to say code React with boilerplate so I can open this into VS code and then we'll take it from there. So now that I have opened it, I'm going to open a terminal right here. So let's quickly open that. And now I can simply say npm install. So I am installing all the dependencies required for this project. Once done, you will see the node modules folder right here and then I can run npm run dev which is a command from the package json so when we create a new project from wheat it essentially comes up with this package json and there are a bunch of scripts already here for example when i run dev it runs wheat behind the scenes and that spins up a development server for us which we can use while we are developing this application. Similarly, we have the build script, which builds a production build that we can deploy for our end users. And then we have linting and preview as well. So now that I have run the npm run dev, my app is being served as localhost 5173. So I'm gonna copy this. And here I can open a new tab and paste it quickly. Now this is the app that is generated by default from Beat. It is a really simple application, which has a count button or a counter button. And the more times I click it, the text changes to the number of times I'm clicking it. Apart from that, it's really simple. It has some text here, some images here, not too fancy to be honest. Now what we are going to do is we are going to add or just modify the code a bit to be honest. And then we are going to run the tests and some more things as well. So let's first modify the components. So if I go to the source and show you what is there actually is. So we have a React application, which starts with main TSX, and we have an index HTML. So if you understand React, you already know that in React, we have the body tag having a particular div that has the ID root. And this root is something that we give to React and say, hey, start your magic, apply React to it. And then it happens right here. So here we are saying React DOM, create the root, which means apply your React magic on an element that has the ID root, as you can see. So this basically targets this element and then React magic starts. And what do we do with this? Once React starts doing something with this element, it starts rendering this app component inside that div. So the div that's empty right now is going to use the app component. Now we go to what is the app component itself. The app component is a collection of multiple things. It has a div, which contains a bunch of logos, which contains a heading, which contains the count logic, and then some paragraph as well. And when you go to the app, you actually see the same thing in the HTML elements tab as well. You're gonna see that the root element has all these divs, the heading, the card, which has the counter component or the button. And here you see the P tag as well. So that's how the React magic works. But you probably already knew that. If you did not, now you know. And then once we have the app component rendered, that's pretty much it. We don't have any more components. So the one thing that I want to take out from here is how does the count variable change when we update something from it? For this, I would highly recommend you to install the React extension. And this is how it looks. So if I look at components here, here is the React extension. And if I click app here, you can see it is starting to load the information. So let's refresh this and see if this works well now. So here you can see that the props, there are no props. The state has one variable that is the count. If I click the count, you can see that the count is now one and here it shows also that the value has changed to one. I can also update the value from here. So I can say 101 and now you can see the count is 101 here as well. So that's how the state is working and you can also work with the React dev tools to make this work. 
Now that we have looked into the state of this component, what we want to do is we want to take out the count itself into its own component. So it's not directly into the app. And that makes it easier for us to test the component as well. So if you look at the code right now in the app TSX, this is the state variable count. This is what you see right here, the state variable that is called count. So the count variable right now is initialized with the zero value as default. So when I refresh the page, you're going to see that the state value is zero for this particular state variable and the count is zero here as well. Then we also have this updater method. So however many times we call this method, the value of the state variable would change. So if I click this, you're going to see that this changes to one, then this changes to two and so on and so forth. Now, whenever I click this button, you see that I have the on click handler here, which essentially calls this update method, the send count method. When it calls it, it essentially takes the previous value. So let's suppose we have just refreshed the application. The value would be zero here. Then it just does zero plus one, which makes it one and so on and so forth. So every time it gets the previous value, adds one to it and then sets it as the count state variable. And then whenever there's a state change in a react component, the, the whole component re renders. That's how react rendering works. So if I change anything in the state, I would re-render the component and then the component shows the new value of the count variable or the count state variable. So I hope this makes sense. So what I want to do is I want to create a new component. I'm going to call this counter.tsx and inside here, I'm going to create a, an arrow function from React. So I'm going to call it counter and inside there, I'm going to paste everything that I have here in this div class name card. So I'm going to just cut this. I'm going to go to the counter component paste this here. And now you're going to see that I'm missing something because I don't have the state being managed here. The state is still is in the app component. So here you can see both of these variables are not being used. So I'm going to cut those. I'm going to move them to the counter variable or the counter component rather. And now I can import the missing uh, pieces. So import use state from react. And that's pretty much it. Now I have my com counter component working fine. All I need to do is just to use that right here. So instead of the div that I just removed, I can now say counter and you can see I can import it from the counter uh, file and that's pretty much it. Now you can see I'm importing the counter from the counter file and I don't need the use state here anymore because the state is being managed in counter itself. If I refresh the page, you'll see absolutely no difference in the view itself. But if I sort of refresh the extension as well, look at what really happens. So it's trying to load the element tree. Let's try to reopen the extension and see if it is able to render the component. So here now you can see we have app, but also counter component as well. So now that we have both of them, you'll see that there's no state variable here in the app. But if I click counter, now I should be able to see the state variable because the state is being managed right now in the counter component itself right here. And now if I try to change anything, it should also change the state in the component, as you can see right here. And then if I change this again, you can see that it is being reflected right there. Super cool. So now we were able to move something to its own component. Now what I want to do more is have a component that makes an API call and that renders something. So I'm going to create a random user component. So I'm going to call inside the source file or the source folder. I'm going to say random user.tsx and I'm just going to print a simple random user. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a component here and then here I'm also going to use a use effect and the use effect is something that I can use to do something when the component mounts for the first time or when the component is rendered for the first time. So first of all, I want to render a user. So I'm going to say const user. I'm creating a state variable right now. So const user. And I'm going to say set user equals use state and use state would basically define the default value. So let's say the user is null by default. Now, what is the type of this user? If I mouse over, you're going to see that it doesn't show anything at all. It just the value is null here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define the type here and the type is going to be off type random user item or null. Now this random user item does not exist. So I'm going to create it. So I can say type random user item. And what is going to be the type here? It's going to have a name property and the name is going to be to have first as a string, last as a string. 
and that's pretty much it. I'm just going to use the name of the user and that's pretty much it. So I'm going to just use this random user item here. And now what I'll do is in the use effect, when I want to run something, when the component renders, I want to be able to fetch something from an API and then set the user from here. So by default, the user is null. I'm going to just render the value of the user here, as you can see, but I'm going to do a json.stringify of the user itself, right? So if I just save this right now, and if I try to render this component, you'll see that there's absolutely nothing there. So first of all, we have a use effect that has an empty function, but it's still that's fine. But now what I want to do is I want to render this random user component. So I'm going to go to app TSX and just after this heading, I'm also going to render the random user and I'm importing it. So here you're going to see at the top, we have random user being imported. Now, if I save this, go back to my app, you should be able to see that we have the null value here. And you can also see that we have the random user component here as well. If I go to the state variable, you can see that it's null and I have an effect that does nothing at the moment. So what I want to do is I want to be able to make an API call to this URL. It's going to be called HTTPS random user dot me slash API. And when I do so, it gives me a particular user, but I want to be explicit about a seed in this case, which means that if I refresh the page right now, it's always going to return a random user. But what I want to do is I want to get the same user, let's say every time. So I can use something like a seed. And here I can say CWA, which means code with SN. And now if I refresh, you can see that I always get the same person. So this is the URL that I want to work with, right? So if I go back to my code here, what I can do in the random user TSX is when I have the use effect here, I can have a function. For example, I can say get user from API. This is going to be an async function and it is going to do something asynchronously. So it's going to get some data. So what it will do is it will say const response equals, and here I'm going to use the fetch uh, method for getting the API. And here we have the URL. Once I have this and I have to use await for this since I'm using async here. So when I use await here, this sends me back a response. I don't want the response to work with. I want the actual JSON from the response. So I can say const JSON object equals await res dot JSON. So I'm going to take out the JSON from the response and then I can take that JSON object to set the user. Now, if you look at the response here, the response that I get contains a results property, which is an array. And the first item in the array is the object that I want. So that's what I'm going to extract from here. So I'm going to say const user object equals json object dot results and then the first element now i can do set user and i can say hey i'm going to set the user object that i've just got from the api and once i do so then i should be able to see the user being rendered super cool so i have my function ready inside the use effect and all I need is to call this function. So I actually get the data because this function has just been declared. I've not called it. So when the component renders for the first time, I want to say, Hey, only if I don't have the user yet, then I'm going to say, get user from API. And that's pretty much it. Now, if I save this, let's see what happens. So if I go to my page right here, you can see that I'm already rendering the whole JSON of the user, right? And that is, if I refresh this, let's see what happens. So if I refresh the page, initially it was null and then something happened and then we got the data. If I go to the network tab, you can see that this call was made and that got this response. And then we are showing that response. Super cool, right? Now, what I really want to do is instead of rendering the whole JSON, I'm just going to say, hey, we have a random user is and here i'm going to say user dot name dot first and then also the user dot name dot last so here space and here i'm going to say user dot name dot last okay now i want to do this only when the user is there for example if i refresh now you see random user is there's a space here and then i actually get the response here 
So then I can show the Marjorie Graham that I get from the API. And this is what I get from the API right here. So it has name and then first and then last, as you can see right here. So now my data also gets shown on the UI. Now it's time for us to actually test these things. So first we are going to test with the vtest and secondly, we are going to also test with Cypress as well. So now that we have both of these things and notice that one of the good things about our implementation so far is we have an app component which renders everything. We have a counter component which just handles the counter stuff with its own state. And then we have the random user component which handles its own state as well by making an API call to a server and gets the data and then renders it. Easy peasy. Now, you could also do something like this here. You could say, hey, if I have, for example, if I don't have the user, then you render something else. So you could say, hey, if not user, then return. You can have a div that says loading or something and that or show a spinner even, so that's fine. So I could say div loading, something like this, and that also works. So in this particular case, if I don't have the user, then it would just say loading. Otherwise it would show the message. So if I refresh now, you see loading for a while and then you see the data coming in. Cool. Now we are going to work with VT or VTest in this case. So how do we start working with VTest? We're going to install a bunch of packages. So I'm going to list those for you so you can see them and then we can start working with those. So in the terminal, you will run npm i dash d, which will save everything as a dev dependency. We are going to install vtest, js dom, testing library react and testing library just dom. With all of these installed in the project, we can start working with vtest, but we'll also require a bit of configuration in order to do everything. So for example, one of the things that we want to do is we are going to create a file called test setup.ts and then we are going to paste some code into it. So the file that we want to create is the test setup.ts and inside here this is the code that you want after installing the packages. So notice what we are trying to do here. We are saying hey after each vtest we are doing a cleanup of the testing library react which means that when we test something via vtest and testing library react we essentially render a React component, but after each test, we clean it, which means that there's nothing rendered anymore. So it's a cleanup that we would like to have. Similarly, we are working with some just DOM matchers for finding out elements in the UI. So just paste this code into your test setup TS file, and we are going to use this in a bit. So the next thing that I want you to do is to create a new file for vtest, just like we have a vconfigts file here, we want to have a vtest config ts file as well. So we are going to say vtest.config.ts and in here we are going to paste this code. So have a look at it. It is getting the define config method from vtest config and here you are going to adjust some properties. First of all, you are going to call this test setup.ts. So just make sure that the file name here, test setup, is exactly the same as this one. So the setup files uh, array get this single value. Then we are saying include all the test file inside the test folder. Now you can choose to have a test folder and have all the test file there or you could just say inside the source folder any files that have the extension test.tsx we are going to work with those and that's pretty much it. So once you have set this up the only thing that's remaining is to have a script that runs the test. So if you go to package.json here you're going to have to create a script called test and here you are going to say vt config or not vt but vtest and then the config is going to be the path that you have your files on. So here you are going to say equals dot slash and here you can say vtest dot config dot ts and let's see if this works fine for us. So if we run npm t or npm run test we should be able to see the vtest working and here what it says is there is no test file at the moment, so it can't really do anything, which is fine. We don't have any test file. So we are going to create our first unit test file or react testing file at the moment using the react testing library. So we are going to go into source and say, hey, there's a new file called app.test.tsx. You can see that it is just beside the app.tsx, which is fine. 
Now we are going to do a const and we are going to import or we can do directly import here. Import from and here we are going to import something from testing library react. What do we want to import from there? We want to import the render method so we can render the app component on this whole environment or the test environment. So we are going to create a describe block, which is the test suit, which means that it combines all of the tests for this particular file. So here we can say app is the test suit. And here we have then the test that we can start with. So what is the test really here? We can say that the app component that we have right here has this text that says click on wheat and react logos to learn more. Or we could say that it has a heading that is wheat plus react. So let's go with this one, the heading one. So in this case, what I'm going to say, Hey, this checks that test should have heading with plus react. Let's say this is the test that we are working with in order to actually run this test. You want to render the app component. So here we are going to say render and here we are going to import the app component and render it. So we are going to say app. You can see that it imports it from the app uh, component file. So if I go there, this is the app component, as you can see. And now what I should be testing is I can say expect here. I am going to say, what should I be really expecting? So here I would say, Hey, um, let's try to find an element. So we can say also apart from the render, we can also import screen. So here we can say, Hey, can I try to find an element, which is this heading? So for this, we are going to say const app title equals get or you can say screen dot get by text and here you can give a matcher in this case we are going to use a regex in this case and what is going to be the regex here read plus react and here since we have a plus i'm going to have to escape it because that's a that's an operator in regex so i have to escape it just like this so this means I'm going to try to find a particular uh, element which has this exactly. And then I'm going to say expect this dot to be in the document. And that's pretty much it. If I change something here, for example, something like this, then let's see what happens. If I run npm run t, you can see here it says that cannot find module experiments test setup. Ooh, I made a mistake somewhere. So let's see the vtest config here. It is called test setup, not tests setup. So let's fix that. Let's run this again. So I'm running npm t. And now we have the actual error. So here you can see that it says, hey, I couldn't really find anything. So unable to find an element with the text read react z, z, z. This could be because the text is broken or something. So now if I fix it to just say read plus react, there you go. We have a test that is working and that exactly tests if this element is on the UI. How do we know this is working? Because if I go and change this and if I remove something or change something, then you will see that it will not work because it will still try to find something in the UI, but it will not. And what's great about this testing library is if you look at the, the text here or the HTML here, you can actually see what is in the DOM versus what is being tested. So here we are trying to say, Hey, find an element that says read plus react. But in here, the actual DOM contains this heading. So that's why we are not able to find it because the actual component contains something different. So I'm, I'm going to revert this back. So it works as expected. Now you can see that the test is passing. Now that we know about this, let's write another test for the counter component. What should we really test in the counter component? And whenever we are working with react testing library or react tests, we need to look into the application logic, not the UI or how the HTML is laid out, but the actual tests that we should be working with. So in this case, you can see that this particular counter has a button. Whenever you change or you click this button, we see this count changed and that is the application logic. So what I should be testing here is something like, Hey, I would try to click this button two or three times. And then I would expect the count to change to two or three, whatever that is. So let's write a test similar to that. So I'm going to say counter dot test dot TSX. And inside here, let's start with the same thing. So we are going to say import and import would be render in this case from testing library react. 
then we are going to say describe we are going to call this test suite as counter and then we are going to have a test that says should increase the count when the button is clicked and then what we need to do here is we are going to say now i want to render the counter component so i'm going to import the counter component from the counter component file and now that i have imported it i want to be able to find the button this button so i can click it now there are several ways to do this i can give this button an id i can find the button by its count but the problem is the count keeps getting changed so i can't really look add this button via its text because the text changes every time so it would be wise to either give this an id a class or something else and when we are working with tests the best thing to do here is to give it a data test id because that is something that a lot of testing frameworks support so i'm going to use data test id equals and here i can say something like count button right and here this thing now i can actually work with what comes out of the box from testing library react and that is i can use a method that is called get by test id and this gives us one single element that matches that particular test id so i'm going to use this test id to get the button so how do i get the button i can either use the screen variable again to find something within the entire screen or this time i'm going to try to find something inside just the counter component so when we are using this render method i can actually get this into a const and i can extract out the base element from here you can see the base element right here and that's pretty much it so in here what i can do now is i can say const count button element equals and now i can say get by test id so here i can say get by test id this takes the container element which is the base element in our case and the test id so count button is a test id and now i have the count button element which is exactly this button so now when i have the button i want to do something in the react testing library context this what i need to do that is clicking the button is done in something called act so you're going to use the act from testing library react and that basically takes a callback function as you can see and here i can say count button element dot click and i can actually do this two to three times let's say do this four times when the component is rendered i know that it starts from zero and if i'm clicking the button four times that means that the count should now be four so now what should i expect out of this so i should be expecting that this count button element itself because the count or the value of the count is shown within the exact same button so i'm checking hey expect the count element dot text content to be and here i can say four for example the fact is that this is going to fail because the text inside is not just the count but this text count is and then the count value so if i look at the test let's see what happened i expected to have a string four but what i actually received was count is four which is accurate so my test was wrong so i need to fix my test and i should be expecting count is four awesome and now if i run this obviously you can see that it works now if i remove even one single click from this it's going to fail again because i've clicked it three times i'm expecting this to be four but it actually is three as you can see so if i if i have wrong test then obviously it wouldn't work if i remove the functionality from my button then obviously it wouldn't work because now i would have completely something different so here if i for example don't do anything at all have something like this console dot log something or smh now you are going to see that since the button does not have anything to do with updating the count the count still remains zero and i'm expecting the count to be four so if my functionality changes in my component my tests are going to fail which is a good thing because i would know or write something changed and i need to either fix my test or fix the functionality so i hope this makes sense we have two components taken care of the final component that we are going to look at is going to be 
the random user component. So we are quickly going to test that as well. So here I'm going to say random user dot test dot tsx. And in here, I'm just going to be lazy and copy paste a bunch of stuff from here. Oops, in the wrong file. This is the one. So in here, we are going to say, hey, this is random user. And I'm going to also check it should render the random user name or user's name correctly. Right? So this is what I should be checking. And in this case, let's have a look. So in this case, I'm going to say, hey, random user component, please render that. And then I get the base element. And then I can look at the text or the test ID. So in the random user UI or the component here, you can see that I have a div. I'm going to give this a data test ID. So let's say here we say a uh, random user text here. So this is the test ID that I can work with. And now I can say, hey, random user text element is going to be the base element and this test ID. So I then get the random user text element. Now what I want to actually see is that the random user text element, the text content contains something. So it's going to be something like if I go to the component, then this should be random user is, and I'm going to copy this, go to my test and paste this, but this username first and last is going to be something else. So if I did say Asan, Ayaz, let's see what happens when I do this. So I'm going to save this and let's see what happens. So in this case, you can see that it tried to find an element with the data test ID random user text, but could not. That's interesting. So the test ID is random user text. Yes. We are rendering the random user. That's also true. And if I look at the data test ID, I have the data test ID here. But the fact that it does not find any element right there is because there is no user. So it actually gets the loading element. Let's say I give the same data test ID to this element as well. And now see what happens. Now you can see that I was expecting random user is as an IAS, but I got loading and that is what happened because there was no user. So the test right now is not waiting for us to make an API call and to get the data. And one more problem is that when we are running tests, we don't really want to make actual API calls. Because imagine if you're working with third party APIs, then only your tests can just fill up the whole quota and then you will be left with no more uh, quota in your APIs. And then you can't use those APIs because they only have limited numbers. So what we want to do with the test is we want to do something called mocking the dependencies. And we can do that with vtest as well. So we are going to mock the response or the fetch method so we can provide our fake fetch there that will provide this fake data. So how do we do that? Let's go here and try to do this. So when the test runs, just before we are rendering, we are going to say, hey, global.fetch, the fetch method is actually a v.fn. What is v? We are going to import it from vtest. So from vtest, we are going to import something called vi. And this vi is going to be a function. Now, what do we want to do? Whenever this fetch is going to be called inside this test, we want to do a mock resolve value once, which means that we are going to resolve a mock value ourselves. What is going to be that mock value? Here, I want to do a particular hard coded response. So I could do something like, hey, I have a mock random user response. And what is that really? It is an object which contains a method called JSON, which returns a new promise. And, or you could also say, which returns promise dot resolve. And then what do you do here? You provide an object here. So here I'm going to have a name and the name is going to have a first called Asin and the last called Ayaz. So I've actually created something similar to what random user API provides, but only the information that my test is going to check 
and also what the component renders. The component only renders the name.first and name.last. So that's what I'm providing here for my test as well. Name.first and name.last. Now what I want to do is when I'm using mock resolve value once, I want to say promise.resolve mock random user response. So what am I doing really? The first thing is this fetch should resolve a promise. If I go to random user, you're going to see that the fetch resolves a promise. That's why we are using a wait here. So this is a response. This whole thing combined is a response. So a promise of this response object. So on this particular line where we go right here in this response, this object is what we have. Then on the next line, we do await response.json. So this means that the response.json should also be a promise, which if we look at here, it is because the JSON method returns a promise itself. So when this is resolved, the JSON object here will be exactly this particular object, which is an object containing name first and last. But now that I recall it, it can't be that because the JSON object should have a results property having an array of one item. So it can't be this. I would have to change this to something like this. This should have a results property and that should have an array and the array will have one single element. And this is how it should be looking. So now that I have this uh, worked out, now I will look into, all right, can I please make this work um, in a good way? So first of all, I would have to change this function, the test function to be async. That the, that's the one thing. The second thing that I want to do is I would have to wait for the global fetch to be called. So before I'm testing my component, what I want to do is I want to do something like this. I want to do await, wait for from testing library react. And here I'm going to say expect. And then I can say global dot fetch dot to be called times one, which means that I'm saying, Hey, I want this whole um, blooper. And here I'm saying, Hey, I want to wait for this to happen. So this takes a function which should return this whole statement. And that means that before I'm expecting something to be shown on the UI, I will have to wait for this to happen, which means I will have to wait for a fetch call to be called. So when the component renders, it will first wait for this call to happen and then it would check the data. So if I save this now, let's see what happens. And you can see the test passes. What if I change something? Let's say the mock data that I have does not just written SNIRs, but rather Muhammad SNIRs. In this case, the test would fail. Why? Because our mock data is Muhammad SN and my test expects here to be SNIRs. If I scroll up, you can see that the expected was SNIRs right here. And the actual value was Muhammad SNIRs. But what's fascinating is that there is no fetch call happening or real fetch call happening in our test. We are mocking the global fetch. We are mocking the response that is supposed to be provided in our test. And then we are expecting something. So that saves us a lot of API calls when we are running the test. So I hope this was helpful. I hope that now you understand first how to run tests with VTest, but then also how to mock different dependencies like fetch to just save your API calls. Now that we have this test written, we are going to work with Cypress to write a test that also checks something similar. But just to make sure that our tests are working fine, I'm going to actually revert this back or actually change the test to accommodate this. So here I'm going to say Muhammad SNIRs and let's make sure that all the tests are working. Now you'll notice that it just says one pass, one pass. So it's only showing you one test. But if you press the A key, you're going to run all the tests and you can see all of the tests are passing. Super cool. Now that we have this, let's actually start working with Cypress to run some end-to-end -end tests. I'm going to close all these files and now I'm going to run npm install and I'm going to say D Cypress. So Cypress is the end-to-end -end testing framework. It's really cool. You can work with a lot of cool stuff in that, but we are going to work with a bit of those concepts. So just setting this Cypress up and having some minute tests is going to be the target for this video. So let's install those. 
All right, now that we have Cypress installed, what we want to do is to create a script inside package.json that we can use to run Cypress. So we're going to create two of those. First of all, we are going to run E2ECI, which is going to be Cypress run. And this is actually running the test on the terminal and not on a browser. The second one that I want to add is E2E, which is just going to run Cypress open, but this one will actually open the Cypress window so we can actually write some tests. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run npm run E2E so we can run Cypress open and it is going to ask us that, hey, we are probably running this for the first time. So this should open up this sort of window. So let me just bring it to this screen. And here you're going to select E2E testing or component testing. So I'm just going to use E2E testing for this one. And now I'm going to continue. I'm going to choose Chrome for this one. And now we would have a window that has some tests. So when you run this for the first time, you're going to see these options, which says, hey, scaffold example specs or create a new spec. So I would advise you that if you're working with Cypress for the first time, just choose scaffold example specs because this gives you some examples that you can work with. For example, the to-do CYJS goes to a page that has a to-do application and tests a bunch of stuff like you can add a new to-do, you can remove a to-do and whatnot. So just look at those files because you can also then look at the code as well. So if I go back to my VS code, now I have a new folder called Cypress and here we have this E2E folder and here we have the files. For example, for the to-do CY, this is the file that you're going to work with. So this file contains the whole code. You can see the CY visit here and whatnot. So in this particular case, so in this particular case, you can see all the information here. I believe you might want to also install some more packages because it seems like that it says CY is not defined for some reason. So we might want to actually add the types here. Maybe that's why. Let's have a look at the code. So here, when we want to start with Cypress, do we want to install the types as well? Into in test, blah, blah, blah. Writing test, getting started, installing Cypress. So we should be installing Cypress with safe dev. That's good. But should we also install types here? Nope, not really. Mm, it doesn't seem like we need to add anything more, but we'll see. Cool. Now that we have the Cypress window open, let's actually add one more test ourselves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the to do app and I'm going to copy this and I'm going to create a new file inside E2E. We are going to call this app.cy.js. And in here, I'm gonna paste this code and then I'm going to remove all of this, but not the reference up top. Here, we can say something like app. And then before each, what do we really want to do? We want to go to the localhost uh, page where we are running our application. So right now you can see that I'm running Cypress into one window, but I want to create another one or another terminal. And here I want to run npm run dev. So I have my project running on localhost 5173. If I go to my browser, which is this one, you can see that I am still running my application. So here you can see that we see the username right here. And then we have the count here as well and then whatnot. So now what I want to do is to be able to go to localhost. So HTTP here, localhost, 5173. This is where I want to go when I run my test. So now that I have saved this, I want to check, for example, if this whole text exists on the UI. So I'm going to say it, or we actually work with this one. So let's go with this one. So we will say it displays the heading containing with plus react in this case. So here, what I would want to do is to actually get the heading element which is here right now. So what I want to do here is I will go to my code inside my app TSX uh, component. So here we have app TSX. Here's the heading and I want to give this an ID. So you could also give data test ID here as well. You could say app heading, for example. And then what I want to do from the CYJS is I will say CY.get and here I can say data test ID equals and now I can provide the value. What is the value that was, if I look at this, app heading. So the app heading should have text 
and here you can have the value of the text. So this should be wheat plus react. So if I go here and use this in a string, I think that should be it. So I'm going to just save this right now and I'm going to remove all the other tests that I can see. So removing this, removing this and just saving this should be good. So if I go back to the window of Cypress, I should be able to go to specs and here you can see that I have now app.cy.js. So if I click this, you can see that the test works. How do we know? Because if I mouse over step by step, it visits localhost 5173. And let me try to close this if I can. Can I close this? Yes, yes, no, yes, yes. And let's open this one. Cool. I'll try to figure out a way to close this maybe just like this or maybe oh this is the one collapse cool so in this case you can see that before each it visits the page then it gets the element by test id then it expects the h1 to have the text read plus react and if anything changes my end-to-end -end test would start failing so for example if i go to my app tsx and let's say tomorrow someone asks me to say, hey, no, we want here Angular. And then the test would start failing because then it should not be able to find read plus react. So if I run this, you can see this, it's trying to do something right here. And no, it can't really find read uh, plus react because it became read plus Angular, right? So if anything changes, our test would start failing. And that is what actually we want, right? Now that we know about this one, let's also try to add some more tests. For example, we'll test the counter thingy. So in here, we will say it should increase the count of or when we click the counter button, for example. So in this case, we are going to try to find the counter component since the end-to-end -end test is of the entire page that is visible. It's not testing one single component, it's testing the entire page. So now that we have another test here, let's have a look at the counter component to get the test ID. So here the test ID was count button. So I'm gonna say it should increase the count when we click the counter button. So here the test ID would be this one. Then what I would want to do is to do click. And then I would want to do the same thing again. So can I do click and then click. If I do this, let's see what happens. In the test here, the first test would pass, but then the second one would try to do something. So let's see if I can make sure everything is okay. I've not changed anything. Yeah, looks good to me. And also let's make sure that the server is running as well. Cool, it is. So now if I try to run the test, so it displays the heading containing read plus react, and now if you see, it clicks it one time and then towards the end, the count becomes three. As you see right here, it shows you what is the end output. And if I mouse over, it shows you both the snapshots before and after. So it was two and then we clicked it and then it became three. So now that we have clicked this three times, we can now say cy.get. So it's exactly the same thing. We could also have just saved it into a variable. So we could say something like const count button equals this and then we can say count button dot click dot click dot click and then we can say count button dot should have text and what should be the text right there count is three because the count is three in that case so i'm just going to save this and let's see if the test works so you can see that the next test also works if i just zoom in a bit so here you can see it should increase the count when we click the counter button. If I click this, you can see I'm here. This is what happens. Click, click, click. And then we are asserting that the button has the text count as three. If we change anything at all, you will see that that doesn't work because that particular part of the test would start failing. So we click three times. Now we are expecting that the count should be four, but the count was three. So the count is three and we expected it to be count is four. So that's how you can also read the test and make sure everything works. Now, finally, we would also want to test about the text that we have. So here you can see we have uh, Marjorie Graham as the text to be shown. So here we can add another test. 
and here we can say should show the random user name so for this one if we have a look at our random user test or the random user the data test id is random user text so what we are going to do here is we are going to get the random user text element by using the text or the test id random user text and then we are going to say hey just wait no need to do any clicks the random user text element should have text what should be the text if i go to the component i can actually copy paste this so random user is and then if i go here i can paste it here and then marjorie graham if i have spelled it correctly so marjorie graham yeah so if i save this now let's see if the test works as well mm -hmm. we still have the one that says count is four so let's fix that it should be count is three because we click three times not four okay and it feels like that we are sort of bashing the random user api call that's why it takes a bit more time so now it should show the random username and now you can see that when the data comes back we can really see that random user is marjorie graham right here and all of the tests work well so now we have an application which is wheat react has b test for react testing and has cypress for the end-to-end -end test so i hope this was really really useful for you and you learned quite a lot let me know in the comments if you found this video useful what was the best part about this video and what could have been improved and what would you want to see in the next videos about react angular or anything related to web application with that said happy coding and i'm gonna see you in the next video